Hi, this is Andy Bartlett. This video will show how to use a hidden gem, Simulink's CodeGen testing target. Here is a Simulink model intended for production deployment. As you can see on the hardware implementation pane of the model's configuration parameter dialog, the intent is to deploy this design on an FPGA. By inspecting the model, we see that data type propagation has selected minimum word length full precision data types. The 12 and 28-bit word links shown are perfectly fine to use on an FPGA. At the current stage in my workflow, I want to do rapid prototyping of my design on an ARM microprocessor. Hmm, how can I do this? One bad idea for doing this is to change the model's production target. To see why this is a bad idea, let's go ahead and change the production target to an ARM7. Now let's update diagram and reinspect the design. Uh-oh, the 12 and 28-bit data types have been changed to 32 and 64-bit data types. That's not what I want. I want to test the production design, not some modified design. How can I do that? The trick is to use Simulink's CodeGen testing target. Let me show you how to find that on the Configuration Parameters dialog. The production target has been set back to FPGA. Now let's see how to change the testing target. The trick is to hover over this ellipse at the bottom. Once Advanced Parameters toggle is shown, expand it to provide a testing hardware section. The most important parameter in this section is this checkbox. You want to uncheck this to allow a different test hardware from the production hardware. Once that's unchecked, you can go ahead and configure the target in the usual way. So let's set this to an ARM7. And to get the fastest testing code, let's make sure that we support long long. OK, we have the production target set to FPGA, and we simultaneously have a testing target for C code generation that's configured to be an ARM. Now let's update diagram on our model again. It looks good. We see that 12 bits and 28 bits are again being used, so we are getting our production design. Now let's look at the generated code for the testing target. Notice all the bitwise operators and constants like 2048. Those are being used to emulate the 12 and 28 bit data types from the production design. These automatically handled details are what gives bit true agreement between the production design and the code running on the testing target. In summary, Simulink's testing target is a hidden gem. It is very beneficial if you know how to access it. By configuring both a production target and a testing target, we were able to achieve all our workflow goals. Thank you for watching.